In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of series connected resistors and look at how the total voltage V sub S is allocated across each of these two resistors. Um, and we'll see that it depends upon the relative size of those resistors. So first of all, we'll note that this voltage source V sub S it applies a voltage across those two resistors and that V1, will, the voltage across R1, will represent a certain part of that voltage and V2 will represent the rest of it, such that V1 plus V2 must equal V sub S. Now to derive our relationships here, let's note that we have this current flowing through both of those resistors because they're in series and that I is equal to V sub S divided by the sum of the two resistances. From that, we can write expressions for V1 and V2. V1, of course, is just the current flowing through R1 times R1, or V sub S over R1 plus R2, that's the current, times R1. And similarly, V2 is equal to the current, V sub S over R1 plus R2, times R2. Now let's just rearrange these two expressions, bringing V sub S out in front and forming the ratio in this case of um, bringing V sub S out in front and then forming the ratio of R1 over R1 plus R2 for V1. And for V2, similarly, we have V sub S out in front and then we have the ratio here of R2 over R1 plus R2. Let's look at these ratios. What this ratio is here, or it represents the percentage that R1 is of the total resistance. And similarly, in this ratio here, this represents R2's percentage of the total resistance. So what this is saying is that V1, the voltage across R1, is proportional to the size of R1. As R1 gets larger, holding R2 the same, V1 will get a larger percentage of the total voltage dropped and thus R2 would receive a smaller percentage. Similarly, V2 is proportional to R2 and again that same argument applies that as R2 gets bigger holding R1 the same, the voltage V2 will increase and take a larger percentage of the total voltage being dropped across them. Let's put some numbers against this. Let's just assume that V sub S is equal to 30 volts and uh, R1 equals 10 ohms and R2 equals 5 ohms. We can then write the expression for V1. V1 is simply equal to V sub S which is 30 times R1 which is 10 ohms divided by R1 plus R2 or 10 plus 5 ohms. Let's write that again as 30 times 10 over 15. Well that's 2 thirds. So for these numbers here, V1 is getting two-thirds of the total voltage dropped across that, or 20 volts. Looking at V2, V2 will equal 30 times, now it'll be R2. R2 is 5 ohms. So we have R2 in the numerator this time, t over 10 plus 5. That's equal to 30 times one-third, or 10 volts. So now with these numbers here we can see what's going on with these ratios. In this case R1 is two-thirds or 66 percent of the total resistance and it gets two-thirds or 66 percent of the voltage dropped across it. And similarly because R2 is only five fifteenths or one-third of the total resistance the voltage dropped across R2 is one-third of 30 or 10 volts. Now let's hold R2 constant at 5 ohms and let's increase R1 to uh, 20 ohms. Once again we'll have V1 is equal to the 30 volts being dropped across the two of them times now R1 is 20 ohms divided by the sum of the two R1 let's just write that here R2 is still equal to 5 ohms so the total resistance now is 20 plus 5. 
So V1 then is equal to 30 times 20 over 25. That's 4 fifths. Well, 4 fifths of 30 is 24 volts. And calculating V2, V2 will equal 30 times 5 over 20 plus 5, or 30 times 1 fifth, which is equal to 6 volts. Notice in each instance, the two voltages have to add up to the total source voltage. 20 plus 10 is 30 volts. Similarly here, 24 plus 6 is 30 volts. But because of the relatively larger R1 in this instance, the voltage across R1 is larger than it was in the previous example. In, in circuit analysis and, and in electrical engineering in general, it's very common to have resistances in series that are or, or across which we're dropping voltages. I don't ask you to memorize very many things, but these two formulas, known as the voltage divider formulas, you're going to want to memorize. And you're going to be using them so much that you'll probably memorize them uh, just inadvertently anyway. But again, the important point here is to realize that voltage is proportional to the resistance. V1 is proportional to R2, or to R1 rather, and V2 is proportional to R2.